Hello, I'm Lawrence Owen, and welcome to today's Week 5 Wednesday Film Room on the Indianapolis Colts. And today, we got to go over something that really needs addressed, okay? The Indianapolis Colts offensive line looked god-awful against the pass with the pass rush of the Cleveland Browns, and we want to know what the heck happened there, right? Colts fans, NFL fans, Colts are supposed to have a top five offensive line. How in the world did the Browns get so much pressure, hits, and sacks on Phillip Rivers on this game? Well, I'm going to tell you what. It is flat out LaRaven Clark, the backup left tackle, the guy who um, was drafted a few years back. They have kept him around. They said they love his size, his length everything about him, but he wasn't very good. They're saying that he was better over this past training camp, and that's why they kept him and they're playing him. But the film doesn't lie. The film does not lie, and this film room is mainly about how badly LaRaven Clark played and why the Indianapolis Colts, for sure, absolutely, without any question, need to go out and get themselves another tackle that can play either left or right, a backup swing tackle in case another person goes down because who knows if Anthony Costanzo will be here at the end of the season or if he or Braden Smith will be healthy for the full season because, I mean, there's still 11 games to play, plus the playoffs possibly. We need a good backup, and that's all there is to it. And LaRaven Clark is not that guy. I mean, he is not that guy. And, you know, let's let's quit jibber-jabbering about this. I'll tell you what. Go ahead, hit the like button, subscribe. If you enjoy this, don't forget there is a donation button right above here. Feel free to do so. Let's get to it, shall we? First drive of the game for the Indianapolis Colts against the Browns. Sixth play of the drive. Miles Garrett here has been kind of testing right in front of Naheem Hines is LaRaven Clark. The backup left tackle came in for Anthony Costanzo in this game because Anthony Costanzo had an injury. I was afraid of this matchup all week, and it came to fruition. LaRaven Clark is not a very good tackle, especially left tackle. And Miles Garrett has been playing out of his mind the pr first uh, quarter of the 2020 season. And in this play, I am really ticked off about some things. And first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to I'm going to play this through, and then you can watch. But he's been his first five plays of the game. He's been testing LaRaven Clark. He's been running a lot of outside pass rush, speed rushes. He's ran a couple inside, and one time he tried a swim move. Let's watch this one. Oh. Oh, man. All right. So let's go back. First off, what we need to do is realize Clark has Jack Doyle out here. We also have Zach Pascal, who is a very good blocking wide receiver. Now, the best person to block on this play at this point could be Pascal. But that's off a chip. That's if he tries to go outside, Pascal will take, just take a step in, chip, and then go out. But you really don't want that when you're inside the red zone, right? So, but Doyle, it's not a smart move for Doyle to come out and try to uh, freehand one-on-one -on -one block because of the how, how far out Garrett is right here. You do not want Doyle getting this block on. Now, what Doyle could do is nothing really. Go out for his go out for his route. At this point, he could try to chip in before he goes out, but I don't know how good that how effective that would be. Let's find out what I'm really ticked off about on this play is how LaRaven Clark just doesn't finish. I mean, he just does not finish on this play. When you got guys. Now watch, Clark steps out, does a good job initially, 
good footwork, steps out, gets on there, pushes him out on the edge, and then at this point right here, the bend on Miles Garrett is so ridiculous. Look at that. I don't know how in the world he got that low. Let's let's step this back just a hair. All right, look at this. Look at that. Then he gets up. Now, at this point, look. At this point, he gives up. Look, his arms are off of him. He gives up on him. At this point, if this was Quentin Nelson or Ryan Kelly or Mark Lewinsky or Braden Smith, this is where he would just bull rush right here with his body, hands right in front of him, and just basically lay on top of him. This would be a pancake, all right? But he just completely just stops. He just stops and gives up on the play. Garrett's able to get back on his feet in no time and run down and sack him. And next thing you know, Clark's like, oops. And then he starts chasing him uh, after he realizes, oh, that was stupid. But it's a little late then. That's a sack on your quarterback, homie. What's up with that? What is up with that? This is a play right here where I would have pulled LaRaven Clark off of it right then. And I would put my backup center at tackle at this point because that is a loaf. If he was on Matt Eberflus's defense, he wouldn't even be in the rest of the game. All right. Especially he needs a talking to at this point because that is ridiculous. Not only did he just give up, he should have finished him. And that's the difference between a guy like LaRaven Clark, who should be a practice squad tackle, and a starter like Anthony Costanzo or Ryan Kelly or, or Quentin Nelson. This is awful. I mean, completely awful. All right. So on this play, he doesn't get sacked. This is the very next play right after the sack that Garrett got off of Clark. And I'm going to give this one, this pressure slash hit that Miles Garrett gets on Rivers. This is on Rivers. This is on Rivers. He Garrett gets that pressure hit and forces Rivers to throw the football in a bad position. And it's because of Rivers. Let's watch the play, and then I will explain why. All right, first off, the throw in and of itself, he shouldn't have threw it. Right there's the football. Corner has the position on the wide receiver. This should have never happened. This should have never, he should have never had to have thrown that football. But he had to. He had to get rid of it quickly. Why is that? Because of the pressure and the hit from Miles Garrett on LaRaven Clark. And, and, and Miles Garrett does the exact same move that he did the previous play where he got the sack. He just a speed rush around Clark. Gets both arms wrapped around Rivers. Why is this on Rivers? Right here. This is why. Jack Doyle's over here. Now, the play right before he knew Clark has trouble one-on-one -on -one with Garrett. He should have recognized that this is a zone coverage. This is zone. Yes, the linebacker's up, but you got three guys over here. You got three guys, and there's three guys out right here. He could easily, these three guys could easily block these three guys. No problem. Doyle, he should have moved Doyle over. Doyle has a route going out to the end zone line and then cutting. He could have easily moved him over here and flipped it and made him go this way. But before he goes off and does that, he could have chipped Garrett to help Clark. Should have recognized this and called for the protection. Called for help with protection. But because he didn't, he had nowhere near enough time to throw the ball when he needed or wanted to. There's no way he should have thrown this football when he did, but he had to because Garrett, like I said, is able to use the exact same play, get around, forcing Rivers, but look at that. Garrett's got both arms wrapped around him as he released that football. Rivers knew he was in trouble. Had he had an extra second, an extra second, not even a second, a split second, a quarter second, he could have had enough time to recognize 
He's got a receiver crossing around the middle here. He could have threw this ball right over here, right here in the end zone. And he would have had a much better shot of catching it because he could have got that ball out in front of the receiver. The receiver might have had a chance to catch this football without the, the, the corner doing it, without the corner being able to make a play on it. But no, because he did not adjust because he did not adjust the protection and move Doyle over to help Clark, knowing that Clark is just severely outmatched, he gets pressured and hit as he throws the football. I mean, granted, this is the, the pressure and hit is because Clark is just god awful at his position and shouldn't even be on the field, but Rivers should recognize that and give him some help. You're still here? Awesome! Thanks for watching this stream. Please, if you have a moment of your time, hit the like button and subscribe to my channel so you're notified next time I go live. And if you got a few extra seconds, hit that description down there below the video and check out all the places that you can follow me, whether it be Sportscaster here on YouTube, Twitter, Facebook, and there's a couple places where you can help donate to my channel. That way I can continue to bring all this content to you. Thank you for your support. Now, let's get back to the video. This play was just awful on both ends. Um, first off, you got Garrett over here. Now, to be fair, Braden Smith, he handled a lot better against Miles Garrett than what LaRaven Clark did. But even on this play, he gives up a little bit of pressure on Rivers from Miles Garrett. But that's not what we're going to look at, all right? He does give up some pressure, and it was a, it all came to down because he gave up too much ground early on, and Glowinski wasn't able to get over there to help him. But this is about Olivier Vernon versus LaRaven Clark, all right? Olivier Vernon has had a crappy year this year crappy until he came to the Col uh, until they played against the Indianapolis Colts they played against the Indianapolis Colts and then Olivier Vernon versus uh LaRaven Clark it was like a matchup in heaven you know right beside Miles Garrett now Garrett could go up against the better guy and Olivier Vernon they can keep Lo Olivier Vernon over here against the worst left tackle in the NFL watch how this play plays out it's awful What? Really? Rivers had to throw the check down really quick. Now, if we watch, let's watch right here with, with Garrett first, okay? First things first with Garrett. Ryan Kelly does a good job recognizing, okay, there isn't anyone in front of him. He's going to go over here to this side and help Mark Glowinski which should in turn allow Mark Glowinski to get over here and help Braden Smith. But look at Garrett. This is a speed, this is, that's a B-A-M-F. And I'm not going to say what those stand for, but you should know. That is B-A-M-F coming right after uh, Phillip Rivers right now. Kelly's going to take on the tackle. At this point, this is where Glowinski needs to step back and help because he's under pressure big time. He's going to end up giving up a little bit of pressure. But look over here with Olivier Vernon and Clark. Clark is beat so badly right now. It's not even funny. It's not even funny. Bam. Done. And he had to dump that football off. The whole side... Went to the right side, the blocking. Kelly took Glowinski. Glowinski should have been able to backpedal and help a little bit, but he wasn't able to because Smith gave up too much on that pass rush. But that speed rush, that speed rush, because of what happened, he got in early. Look at that. Look, look. I mean, that Clark should have been able to push him out to about here to allow Rivers to step up to throw this football. But he didn't. He got he got the edge on Clark way too early, Olivier Vernon did, and was able to just make a beeline straight for him. 
It's just bad. Just bad all the way around. The Browns defensive ends, because they were able to put Garrett over on Smith because Olivier Vernon was able to do whatever he wanted against LaRaven Clark, that meant they were able to get pressure on both ends rather than just one. And that just makes things, that makes life that much more difficult for Rivers. Makes Rivers have to throw the football way too early and not be able to do anything. Rivers got demolished this game. Demolished. And it wasn't just because of Garrett. It was Olivier Vernon on Clark as well. All right, sometimes on the pressure, when you get pressure a ton on a quarterback too fast, it blows up plays. It completely blows up a play. It makes the quarterback throw the football when he's not even ready to throw the football like normal, right? But how about throwing it, I mean, completely obliterating a play that's obvious. Let's watch this and see what happens. Watch Miles right here. All over Clark. He has to throw the football, throws it to the back shoulder for T.Y. T.Y.'s not quite ready for it. There's a reason why he wasn't quite ready for it. Because the ball wasn't even supposed to go to him. Let's go back here. You got the running back coming around the side. This is a running back screen play. All right? Rivers is looking this way for one reason only. To keep the safeties this way. And the linebackers this way. That way... When he's able, you know, wants to play develops, he can turn and throw to his running back. But in order to do that, he needs a moment, a moment to be able to keep them over there to get the running back out over here so that the running back's ready. But he doesn't have time. Why? See, look, now, he's going to look this way to try to draw. See, when he looked that way, hold on. He looks back this way, and these two guys, all three of these guys, have to stop and respect him going that way. See how they stop? They stop to look that because he's looking right at T.Y. Now, he did that on purpose. He's looking the safeties and the linebackers off. Make them think. That way, they're not all coming over here to help. What, what they don't realize is this is blocking right here getting set up. Now, at this point, this is where Rivers is supposed to turn back to the running back and throw him the football. But when he looks over here at T.Y., he sees something else. He sees Garrett beating the snot out of LaRaven Clark. He ain't going to have time to turn around and throw this football. He has to get rid of it now. He has to get rid of this football now. So he does. He throws the back shoulder to T.Y. Had he had a quarter second to throw the football to where he's supposed to throw it, this is all blocked up. All blocked up. All right? No problems. You'd have had him blocking him out all the way out. He'd have been pushing him out. He would have blocked him off. He would have blocked him off. He could have threw the football. He'd have caught it. He would have went, since this guy would have been down here, he would have went around him and then behind the other two guys. And the only guy that would be able to make a, uh, any kind of play on him would have been this strong safety. But it would have been well past the first down marker. And if and if the running back, you know, one-on-one, -on -one, strong safety versus running back, I'll take the running back every day. Good possibility this could have been, you know, a 50-plus yard running back screen touchdown. But because of this right here, because Rivers doing the right thing and looking away from where the play is supposed to be happening to keep the linebacker and the safeties in check, because Miles had his break on him, Rivers had to throw the football immediately. He don't have time. He knows he don't have time to turn around and throw the football to the running back. He's got to get rid of it, or it's a sack, or a forced fumble. He's got to get rid of the football. That's what happens when your left tackle is so god-awful that he doesn't give your quarterback not even two seconds to throw a running back screen. I mean, come on. All right, the last play I'm going to do about this offensive line and how bad LaRaven Clark is. First off, this is the safety. Yes, this is the safety. And a lot of people say he should have threw the ball to Jonathan Taylor, right? 
he should have threw the ball to Jonathan Taylor at his feet that way. You know, it wouldn't have been a safety. At least it would have been around someone, you know, that way it wouldn't have been intentional grounding, blah, blah, blah. No, nah, he couldn't have done it. Could not have done it at all. Now, first off, let's watch this. Very simple. Doyle comes out here. Doyle, believe it or not, on this play is wide open, but Rivers has absolutely no time to throw him the football uh, and recognize anything because of how bad Clark gets beat. Watch. Ah! No way. Now, technically, if he'd have threw the ball out here, Clark would have had the football. He could have threw the ball, but, I mean, my goodness. Look. Look at this. I mean, my goodness. Now, they're saying he should have threw the football at his feet. Or or at, at Taylor. There's no way he could have. There was people right in front of him. Right? Here he picks the hand off. He steps back. He has no time at all. Here's Taylor. Here's your blocks. Here he is. He sees him getting ready to come up on him. How is he going to throw that football at him when you got a whole line? A whole line of people. There's, there's five huge bodies in the way. There's no way he could have threw the football to him. He couldn't have just lofted it over the top because, uh, hello, that's an interception touchdown. He did the right thing by getting rid of the football. And he was looking in that direction. He, I mean, had he given a moment, had he had a moment, he doesn't have a moment. Right now, he's got to get rid of the football. Had he had a half a second longer, Mo Alley Cox was open. He could have got him the football. Mo Alley would have caught the ball and probably picked up a few yards. If he had a moment longer, I mean, Jack Doyle, oh my goodness, it would have been a huge play to Jack Doyle. Either way, but he couldn't. He had no time to make the decision. Too many bodies in the way for him to throw to Jonathan Taylor at all. Too many. If he'd have thrown it behind him, the refs would have called safety anyhow because it would not because the running back wasn't even looking for it. You don't throw it. it, it you have to throw the football beyond beyond the uh Line of scrimmage. There's nowhere for him to throw it at Taylor's feet beyond the line of scrimmage for Rivers to throw it to. And he sure as sure heck couldn't throw it over because that's an interception touchdown, like I said. So everyone's saying that he should have threw the ball at Jonathan Taylor's feet. It would have been a safety anyhow. That's why Rivers did what he did. This was all because... Simple fact, LaRaven Clark is just that bad at playing tackle. He got beat way, way too much. I would have taken him out at halftime. At least halftime. But he didn't. I think that's on coaching. If you're if you got to tap put in someone, put in Pinter. I don't care. Put in anybody. Like I said, I'd have put in the backup center to play for him at that point because Clark was doing an awful job. Awful job. Or at least keep a tight end there to help something. But they left him too much one-on-one -on -one against the hottest defensive end right now in the NFL in Miles Garrett. You cannot do that. The passing was not good in this game because Rivers didn't have time to allow plays to develop. Even running back screens, he didn't have enough time to get to, to, to let those develop. That's bad. And that tells you that our depth at tackle, whether it be left tackle or right tackle, is bad. We need to find someone right now, this week. The Colts need to bring some people in, work them out for the tackle position 
as a backup tackle and just let Clark go. We've had Clark far too long now. It's been over. Th- it's been over three years. Clark has not improved. He is still god awful. Let LaRaven Clark walk. Bring in somebody. Work some people out. I don't know if they're doing it right now at this point, uh, this week. But God, please do it. Please. I don't care. Sign someone off someone's practice squad. I don't care. Get somebody else. I hope and pray that Anthony Costanzo and Braden Smith stays healthy the rest of the season and that Anthony Costanzo can play this week against the Bengals because this is just absolutely terrible. And that's my breakdown of what happened in the Browns game and why the Colts weren't able to move the ball as efficiently as we figured that they would be able to against this Browns defense. Just too much pressure. Way, way too much pressure. Thank you for watching. And I still don't understand why they had five people, five people going out on a wide receiver, on a, on a receiving route, knowing that they are right there on their own end zone with Miles Garrett and LaRaven Clark having issues. So uh, why didn't they have one of their tight ends or running backs there helping rather than uh, just leaving it one-on-one with LaRaven Clark? It just seems stupid to me. The good news is that Anthony Costanzo is back at practice. So Clark will not be on the field, hopefully, this week against the Bengals. And as long as the starting five is out there, I have 100% faith in this offensive line. Uh, Even against the upcoming Ravens or Steelers, as long as the starting five is out there. But depth at the tackle position is a very scary proposition going on for the rest of the season. I do not like that at all. And I hope um, that Chris Ballard does something about that and soon. Otherwise, the Colts are are in for a a big-time amount of trouble. So I want to thank everybody that joined me here on Sportscaster as I broke out my Week 5 film room. Um, Thank you, Rock Me Baby, for joining. Ray Route, DPN Ray, thank you as well. BJDax96, thanks as well. And at Diesel, all you guys, Yes, there were four people that joined me here on Sportscaster. Out of 50 people watching live right now, come on, guys. You could do better than this. Go make a profile. That way you show up over here in the live chat. All you got to do is go right up here in the corner, click the little drag-down button, you know, make a profile. It takes you like 15 seconds. You can link it to your Twitter or your Facebook or an email or something. No time at all. That way you're able to follow me. You can join in the chat. You can hit the like. You can share you can uh, subscribe, whatever, make a donation, in anything. Please, just make a profile. It's very, very simple. And while you're here, if you enjoyed what I do, hey, I'm on Sportscaster News as well with all my boys, Ray Rout, Joe Nubo, Adam Armbrecht, and Keith McPherson. We are all part of Sportscaster News, and we bring you NFL news every day of the week. Sometimes multiple times each day, depending. Pre-game and post-game. And once again, thank you for joining. I'm Lawrence Owen for The Film Room. And as usual, I want you to have a good one. Just because a guy's a player is not a household name, doesn't mean we can't make him a household name.